Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kato from Kato's Toy Box, and I wanted to do a special Kato's Toy Box presents today with a, a new friend, a guy that uh, has been making the talk show circuit uh, now. He's uh, has been on a few others, and now I consider this like the uh, he's made his way to the early 90s daily show Comedy Central smaller <laughs> audience. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present... Dennis, a.k.a. Gotbot, uh, one of the nicest people. He gives Canadians the absolute stereotype for a good reason of being warm and nice. Uh, so, Dennis, tell everybody about yourself a little bit, brother. Uh, for, first things first, I knew when I saw you the very first time, I was like, I know him, and I, I get it now. John Stewart. John Stewart, <laughs> right there. John Stewart. Um, you know, first of all, thanks for the kind words. Believe me. I don't really feel that I am too stereotypical lately. Yesterday, I had a couple of heated exchanges, enough that like I I, I gave up on the conversation and I quit. I backed my chair away from the table. And I, I don't like when that happens. I've been really passionate lately, but not necessarily always in the best of ways because I feel like we've had a lot of stuff. No, that's a lie. Not a lot of stuff. We've had one huge thing come up that's caused so much division and i've i don't know i think i've been too opinionated about it and i i want to get away from that because this is supposed to be fun man this is supposed to be a good time this is supposed to be a party i couldn't agree more and i think the division always comes in when when something new happens it it came in uh bayverse right it came yeah. in Bayver. before that it came in during the machinima series uh, after that, it came in when Siege started. Luckily, Siege promo pictures kind of quieted people down and they looked all right. But the $5 upgrade in price, or in Canada even more, and kind of started another divide. And now there is uh, the the chaos bringer living up to the dream. Chaos, yeah. Uh, separating people. Personally, I don't get involved with it. I don't care. It's your money. Spend it on whatever you want. It doesn't affect me at all i never have in the past and i think the only reason that it's happened this time for me and i'm not planning on on spending uh, much of our visit here on this because it's a topic that i'm sick and tired of i'm just i'm tired of talking about it. i'm tired of hearing about it but i feel like i got kind of sucked in this time and like i it's one of those things where it's like i know better i shouldn't have said anything i know better but i think i got sucked in this time because I look at it from a grander scheme and for me personally from a moral standpoint i i can't get behind the message it sends i know everybody got to make their own choices i get it but i i think that the teacher in me and i think that that's what i'm blaming it on the teach the loudmouth teacher in me is kind of gone past where i should have gone past in making comments about this which is why yesterday i decided to finally just back my chair away from the table because I think that's what I have to do before I say or do something that I'm going to regret. I completely get it. Sometimes sometimes you got to do the adult thing and just go, I'm out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you have an opinion. You you know what it is and you know what other people's are and you just go, ah, wash in my hands. Let's talk about fun stuff. So the funniest, the funniest part is the funniest part with it is is that when I actually done a discussion video on him, I actually presented it as objectively and fairly as I could from both sides. But I think a lot of people have assumed that I've seen things one way or the other way. When the truth is, like I was neither Gatbot nor Dennis in that video. I was the moderator. I was the in between dude, and the in between dude had his own thoughts and I've been I found myself getting trapped into having to present that you know and that's the that's the funny part because a lot of people are confusing kind of which role I am and I see why because I was playing multiple roles there yeah and, and that's, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't seen that discussion go see that no, yeah yeah we're, we're you know Dennis is talking and got by us talk yeah I, 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 I think before but you know what before we get on that uh, dead horse Let's talk about something fun. Sounds good. That we can all agree on. And that is your latest video is just one that I've watched that I can appreciate. One, because I've tried uh, stop motion before. Um, Semi-successfully. It, it went well. It just was a lot of time 
and I think I have a lot of time. I'm just too lazy to keep trying. Uh, but one that I can appreciate because you spent a good 30 minutes going through some great techniques. And for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Gotbot not only does reviews, he also has a great series uh, with stop motion animation that I would I would bet that everybody in chat right now is already sub to him. But for the sake of perpetuity, if you're watching this later, I will have a link in the description below for him. But what made you want to do the tutorial? Because, you know, some folks want to keep all their secrets to themselves other than you being a teacher. Yep. Well, you know what? Honestly, I'm going to go back um, a little bit. I've always been um, a storyteller. I mean, from the time I was a little child, I was the guy, you know, you know, when you were growing up in school and you had to write a story in class and you had that one or two students in class. And while everybody would write a story that was, you know, one or two pages, you had that one kid that was writing something that was like 10 or 11 pages. I was that one kid that was writing something 10 or 11 pages because I had a story to tell. And then I ended up writing a couple of books. Um, actually, I still have one that's not published and I still have one that I'm working on, though I rarely get time to work on it anymore. Um, and of course, being a fan of Transformers as I am, when I got into doing the reviews and whatnot, I also had ideas and stories that I wanted to tell. Ideas that had been building in my mind for a long time because I'm a huge fan of canon and things that don't fit in canon, I kind of mentally construct my own way to make them fit in canon. And through the jigs and reels, as we like to say in my neck of the woods, it's a common colloquialism, uh, it, but it basically means, you know, through the thought process over time, I put together really four seasons worth of story. So when I think about something like Universal Collision, I am well, well, well planned ahead storyline wise. And in season one, I wanted to tell a particular story with uh, an, like an other verse, Megatron and Optimus coming into the, I'll call the prime universe and sort of wreaking some havoc there and Unicron noticing it and it sort of manipulating Megatron to make Megatron believe that there was a certain plan playing out when there really wasn't a plan playing out. And now in season two, I have another kind of arc that I already have planned, even though it blew up to be something huge, a lot bigger. Season three has its own arc and season four will have its own arc. And when the conclusion finally comes, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by the way I end season four and sort of where I leave things at in season four. Or I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to kind of flip things on its head a little bit for where people would expect it to go left by the end. All right, so if that's not enough of a tease for anybody that's watching this to go subscribe and find out what you're talking about, it you're crazy because it's a lot. Now, and I don't mean and I don't mean to interrupt you, but now again after that long-winded explanation of why I even do it to begin with, we get to your question, which was why did I do the tutorial? I've done a few tutorials. I done one about just basics of stop motion. I done one about how to make things fly. I done one about Kind of how to do a battle scene the latest one is about doing a chase scene and doing a transformation now while a lot of his transformers related a lot of the of the techniques could apply to marvel gi joe whatever you want to use maybe not transformations but i wanted to tell people because i started off with some ideas of how to do it and i just had to learn the hard way because i didn't i didn't see a whole lot explaining how to do it and when i did see a tutorial explaining how to do it it was more advanced people with more advanced techniques using things like uh, Adobe Premiere, which is an expensive program. So if you're young or you're new and don't have a huge following or you don't have a huge budget, how do you get started? And that's what I wanted to try and convey to people. If you have an idea, if you have a story to tell, don't feel like that you have to make all of this huge investment. You don't. You just need to know what skills and what techniques to begin with to tell your story and that's why I do the tutorials and that's what I liked about it because you're right when I was messing around with stop motion um, and you start looking up stop motion tips you know you do the traditional Google run of how to do stop motion what are some right. stop motion tips and it's almost always someone who has forgotten uh, that they didn't always know what they were talking about <laughs> and, and the things when I, and again, this goes back to me being a teacher. One of the things that many of my professors told me during my degree 
was never forget what it was like to be a beginner. Because you got to think, man, like there are days that I, I've gone in with grade one students. They don't know how to add five plus five. They don't know what that means. You have to teach to them what that means so that they do know it. And that means being able to go back yourself and remember what it was like for you not to know how to do that. And that's the same sort of logic that I apply to something like the stop motion. Go right back to, you know, talk to me like I'm five. Yeah, and I agree. I think that's the... I think that's the easiest way to begin. Now, I am, I am uh, kind of a hands-on. I like to get in there and mess up and sure. find out what not to do. But there needs to be a starting point, and everyone learns differently. And there, at, at 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 zero knowledge, right? You know, you you don't know things like uh, our frame rate, right? they don't really discuss frame rate, which you did, right? The first thing you think of is, okay, I just need to move this, then move it again, and then move it again, and move it yeah. again, and move it again, and move it again. If I want to move it slower, if I want it to look slower, I make smaller movements. If I want to move, make it move faster, I make bigger movements. But they don't really talk about adjusting your frame rate within that. Or using transitions to your advantage. Right, which I, I um, that was you. Have that, you ever seen, have you ever seen stop motion by, um, What's his name? Harris Luero, I think his name is something like that. I can't remember what his name is. But if you see his Harris Luero or something, I can't remember what his name is. A lot of people know him. He's well known. He has like a, you know, a few million followers or something, right? But if you see his stop motion, it looks brilliant. And I can guarantee you that he is using thousands of frames. And I can also guarantee you that he is using blur transitions between those frames to make the motion look as smooth as it looks. 100% he is, which is great because the man is very advanced, but, yeah. but you need to build up to that. You know, it's the same reason that I, I have done tutorials for customizing because a lot of people will say, I can't do that. Dude, I am old. I have poor hand eye coordination. If I can do it, you can do it. You just need to know what to do. And the thing is, nowadays, it's when I first started doing it, when I first started messing around with stop motion um, quite some time ago, right? It, it, the, I don't even think the iPhone was out yet. So, you know, a camera or you might have a decent web, a half decent webcam yeah. where, you know, you're taking frame by frame pictures. Now, but now there's there's apps that make it easier. Um, I think one that I have is that I was messing with was um, I can find it here real quick without slowing things down. Stop Motion Studio is a good free one that you can yeah. mess with, um, and and everyone has a camera now. You've got you've got apps like that that allow onioning of layers. You know, layering uh, the yeah. onion layers to make it easier. So uh, it even has like green screen. It can do tons of things that, you know, yeah. that make it way easier now than five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So all that, that was just, that was just to, to say awesome on the tutorial and something a little outside of the transformers talk that we normally do. Uh, but now we're going to talk about transformers. First off, you're not just a transformers fan. From a from the little conversation we've had, all right, I'm going to change it. We're not going to talk about Transformers. You're also an overall sci-fi fan. So, in in just the few messages that we've sent back and forth, we've talked about Star Trek. We've talked about, mostly because I said I wasn't doing anything today and I was playing Star Trek online. But uh, we've talked about Mask. Yeah. We've talked about uh, GoBots. So, you're an overall um, pardon me, I'm going to use the term proudly. You're an overall geek like me and like probably most of us. Yeah. So we know that you focus on transformers and stop motion. Is that your favorite uh, toy line? Is that your favorite uh, nostalgic toy line to mess with? Um, I, it's weird. Like, I, you know, I am the sort of person who, looks at it as, okay, I have to choose a path to follow. If I didn't choose a path to follow, I would be one of those people who could easily jump down the rabbit hole and collect a bit of everything. And it could get really overwhelming space-wise, 
finances wise. I'm not interested in that. Um, I would love to have access to, I'll say access to, but not necessarily own, um, like uh, a nice selection, for example, of Marvel figures. I could do some great animations with that. Uh, I would love to have, I have some GI Joe figures. Um, and now and again, I add some to it because I've always been a fan of it, but I'm more concerned there with kind of just having the Cardinal characters. I need a good Zartan. I need a nice, like maybe that 25th anniversary Zartan. Um, I've, I've never been a huge Star Wars fan. I know, sacrilege for a lot of people. It's all, like, it's all right. And it's funny because in our, our house, uh, Starscream Wife is a Star Wars fan. I'm a Star Trek fan. And you'd think that they can't coexist, but you know what? They can. It's very Romeo and Juliet. Um, but uh, Mask, I love Mask. I don't have nearly as much of that as I would like to. I almost dread when the day comes that they kind of open up that toy line again because I may end up shifting focus. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it's done. We'll see what the price points are. Um, but if I had to choose, say, my top three, um, yes, I would say Transformers is at top because it has the most to offer with a couple of modes and the whole puzzle element, plus a wealth of classic characters. Mask would be after that. And then after that would probably be G.I. Joe. That's probably my top three. Yeah, I don't think I disagree. I, I think I would only switch G.I. Joe and Mask. I think Mask falls below G.I. Joe for me only because... G.I. Joe toys were much more readily available and lasted longer. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Transformer for me, number one. But a, a really close tie to that is uh, Marvel Legends. I'm a huge Marvel Legends fan, to, and I had to make a decision, right? I had to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, only, I'm either going to do Marvel Legends reviews or I'm going to do Transformers reviews. And quite honestly, it was like, Oh, but I forgot how, until I started watching more reviewers, I forgot how much I love Transformers. I'm not going to pretend, though, that when I lately have been checking things like EB Games for Wave 3, because that's the only place here that's had anything from Wave 3 of the Siege Line show up. I'm not going to pretend, though, that when I walk in there and I see those 85th anniversary um, uh, Iron Man and Thor figures and the two packs of... Uh, was it Wolverine and I can't remember who he's packed with now. I can't pretend that they're not grabbing my attention though, because they absolutely are. They look gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous figures. Really do. And it's it's tough because the, the thing that pulled me out of Marvel Legends a little bit is because uh the um the waves when they came out, I'm glad from for my pocket's sake that they kept introducing characters I didn't care about. So you'd have like seven people in a, seven characters in a wave and I might want two or three of them. So it actually was the build a figure that pulled me away from it. Cause I was like, I'm not going to get this guy because just because he has a leg. Yeah. So it, it kind of took me away from it. And where, uh, when, when siege came out, when uh war for Cybertron siege came out, I was like, Oh, this is a great time to start, you know, to reintroduce my collection. I can, get whatever figures I want. And, uh, but Larkin's layer is right. He said, he's just doing the nineties X-Men Marvel's legends. That's something I could get into. See, I could do the gym. I could do a specific set of Jim Lee. I'm pretty much always going to buy a Spider-Man figure just because, um, it's Spider-Man. Spider but as far as the other legends, I, I would, I could see myself doing a, you know, an X-Force or a Jim Lee era X-Men or, they just started doing the classics again, where they're bringing back the, you know, the the new molds of old figures and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. I could definitely do that. As far as mask goes, one, it's easy for me not to collect masks right now because it's freaking expensive to do it. It is um, to find a figure complete is ridiculous. Um, luckily, you know, you know, there's a good line and never gets the love it deserves. What's that? Starcom. Starcom was such a good line, man. Starcom was good. Starcom, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm, or help me if I'm wrong, but I brought it up before in one of these toy talks, and that was the ones with the magnetic feet, the small, like, three figures with the magnetic feet. Magnetic feet and they have, like, a motorized, like, their vehicles would have, like, a motorized gimmick aspect to them. Yeah, those. Way and, uh, 
Sky Commander. You remember those? I think Sky Commander is the one that had the they had like the pulley system that you could yes. wire yes. over. They, I can't remember what they were called, but I, I can picture the commercial. I think you're right. And yeah. I think another line that was ahead of its time. Absolutely. Yeah, that, it would stand the test of time today, I think. Cops. Cops was a toy line so ahead of its time. Yeah, I remember Cops. Yeah, see, these these conversations always take a left turn because I end up talking about old cartoons and, toy, and old toys, and, and I'm perfectly okay with it. So don't ever think if you're going to watch uh, any of our present shows, everyone, that it's just going to be a transformer because it's going to veer off to whatever we want to talk about. But uh, so, okay, GI Joe, and we've talked about it before on, on multiple different shows, but uh, would you be willing to back a six inch, like a Marvel Legends scale GI Joe reboot? Ooh. Oh, I don't know. See, I was always three and three quarter inch scale for Joe, but that's an intriguing idea. Here's the thing. I think I might um, be down for that if if they really stuck to like the core characters, uh, certainly for the first while. Like, I mean, am I down to get necessarily a six-inch version of um, Crystal Ball? No. As well, I, I name, some people are probably like, Crystal Ball, who's that guy? Uh, you know, am I down to get a, a six inch version of DJ? Maybe not, but you know, Flint, Beachhead, yeah. Duke, Snake Eyes, yeah, probably. You know, uh, do I necessarily want Firefly? Uh, but like Destro, Cobra Commander, Baroness, Major Blood, sure, why not? So I think yep. it depends. Like, I think it could fly depending on the price. I think, though, that that market is about to become a little more interesting because I have this feeling, and I could be wrong, but I have this feeling that what Mattel is planning to do now with their Masters of the Universe uh, line where they're having kind of like the old molds but with new articulation at a pretty reasonable price point, I think that's really going to put figures like similar to it, like the Marvel Legends line, on notice of what can be done for this price point. And I think a lot of people will say, look, I know what like Mattel can offer for this, you know, few dollars less. I think that you're going to see either a price reduction or you're going to see, I think, something like Marvel Legends really sort of have to step up their game. We'll see. We'll see. I I'm kind of excited to see what Mattel brings to the table with this. Maybe nothing. Maybe it's hype over nothing, but I'm I'm, I, I like that there's hype about it. Yeah, I think I would be down if they did, like you were saying, if they did a sort of an anniversary edition, say yeah. 30, 30, well, it's got to be around 35 years, just like Transformers uh, of the of our G.I. Joe, not not the original 12 inch, but like the of our 80s G.I. Joe, we're talking around 35 years like Transformers. If they did Flint, Duke, Scarlet, you know, uh, Lady oh, J. Oh. Um, Storm Shadow, yeah. you know, all all those in like a 35th anniversary packaging in the same way they do the legend, the Marvel 85, and and you know we're probably not going to get vehicles <laughs> big. We're not going to get all this stuff, but couldn't you see Hasbro doing that six inch anniversary? And then of course Haslab would come up with a, uh, I a, a, a crowdfunding for. Uh, the jet or the aircraft carrier i think it's all possible do i think it's practical see here's the thing while i'm i'd be down for it if they're going to come out and be like yeah but these six inch figures are going to be you know in my neck of the woods you know 39.99 no i'm not paying 40 bucks plus tax canadian for a six inch snake eyes i'm not doing it no i'm not no. you know what i mean so like i think that here's the thing i think that the pricing for these things in a U.S. market probably still has a little room to grow yet. Though I hear people grumbling about things like $20 for a deluxe transformer. Dude, we've been paying $20 for a deluxe transformer for three or four years, and we grumbled about it three or four years ago. Now our grumble is $30, and a lot of people are saying, nope, they hit the ceiling here. Not going at it, man. Not going at it. And that's why things like Siege aren't flying off. The like People are like, 
selling right out. I can go right now and find you a bunch of shockwaves and, uh, you know, ultra magnuses and I can get you a star screen and touch the box and wipe my hand on the top of the box and take the dust off of it because it's not moving for the price that they want up here. Yeah. I think that they've hit their ceiling here. I think they're closing in on hitting their ceiling there, not just with transformers, but I think that just the toy industry in general is getting to a point where, they're kind of hitting a ceiling for what the general consumer market is willing to pay for what they're offering as a luxury item. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like more and more that's the trend we're seeing as time well, goes. Well, I don't, I don't disagree. I, I just went to Walmart yesterday and I picked up two things from the shelf, stared at them for about 30 seconds and put them back on the shelf. And it was um, the reissue of Ravage uh frenzy bust all late you know the 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 cassette packs it was both yep. of the cassette packs and yep. they were they were $19 each or 18 and some 80 something change and i grabbed them and i looked at the size of those cassettes and i and they were uh, essentially $40 yeah for two sets of g1 issue cassettes yeah and i i literally looked at my girlfriend and was like this is a bad idea and i put it back but you know what people would say? People would say, hey, if you actually wanted the G1 ones, though, you go to a secondary place like eBay, and they go for crazy amounts on the aftermarket. That's only if people are willing to pay the crazy prices. I'm not buying like, that either. Don't, 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 don't tell me that it goes for a crazy amount. It just means that there's that many people willing to pay a crazy price for it. And, like, more power to you if you feel a need to have it. That's the thing. But here's the thing. Like, you really need it. You know, none of us need it. It's a luxury. So how badly do you want your luxury? How much are you willing to put yourself out? When it comes to a hobby and putting myself out, I'm not willing to put myself out for a hobby. Other people are great. But like, I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe I'm cheap. I don't know. Maybe I'm cheap. Maybe I'm just a cheap, complaining old man. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I, I'll, I would like to tell myself that if tomorrow I won the lottery, I would be just as smart. <laughs> I would like to say that. I don't know if it's true. I feel like it's true, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, if suddenly, you know, a million bucks showed up in my account, would I have put those back? No. Mm, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> probably you not. Say it's a drop in the bucket. And what do I care? That's right. You know, and I think they're definitely leaning on the hardcore collector. Right, because because ten year old new new transformer guy is getting cyberverse, right? Yeah. So put, putting out the G one reissue, which is great. Right next to that was a shelf where Optimus is now going for twenty five dollars. Um, you know, and that's I paid fifty for him, and I kind of regret it, but uh, I got him. I'm not taking it back. He's seventy. But, yeah, see, that's crazy. Seven. I mean, I you know. Now, let's put it in perspective, too, like for equivalency. You have that $70 G1 Optimus, okay, that reissue on the shelf next to Ultra Magnus, Shockwave, and Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime. Those two toys, they're trying to tell me that those two toys are the same value. And, yeah. you know, I know what they're going to use as their argument. They're going to say, but the G1 has die cast in it. Okay, cool, man. That's great. But when I look at them, you know, objectively, when I just pick them up in my hand and look at them, you're not getting as much from that Optimus as you're getting from that Ultra Magnus, for example. You're no, just objectively, as a toy, not getting as much. We, they are. All right, let's let's just be brutally honest about Transformers right now. In 1984, they were awesome. They were because there was nothing else like it other than a few knockoffs and GoBots and stuff like that. Yeah, but. When you look at the G1 toys, they're hideous. Yeah. They're not attractive, especially in bot mode. Alt mode, they look great. They are obviously designed for alt mode first, robot mode later. Um, now, that's to say, I love them because they bring back all these memories from me being a kid and playing on the floor. Absolutely. But, but there is no way you can logically put Siege uh, Optimus Beside G1 Optimus 
and say that see that G1 is a better toy. G1 is beautiful. Right. Okay. G1 Optimus, I mean, he's beautiful. He is because of the nostalgia and the value that we give it because of that. Plus, like, let's let's be realistic. The chrome is beautiful on him. That's right. However, you know, people complain about, oh, Transformers are hollow. Was G1 Optimus Prime not hollow? Have you seen his chest? He was hollow. He was not really hollow. hollow. No. But I'll say this. When I was a kid, I look at Optimus, who was one of the definitely one of the better ones because he had arms that could go all the way around. He had elbows. And though his hands were detachable, technically the man, well, the bot, had wrist swivel. You know, he had knees. And his legs could bend back. Now, they couldn't go to the side and they couldn't go forward. And even as a little kid, I said, man, this guy's excellent. But, like, I wish his arm could go out. I wish his leg could go forward. And I think the reason that I am a, like, a Generations Chug Siege collector more than, like, something like masterpiece or high end stuff is because I can go to the store I could see on the shelf these generations figures and to me I can say little boy me going to the store would have loved to have seen this as an option to buy then and it, it 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 stirs up those feelings for me that's why I enjoy going on the hunt and finding something at brick and mortar more than I do just ordering it online I'm so happy when I see something in store. I was like, yes, I wanted this guy or these guys. And I'm so happy to trot up to the right register with them. And it's, it's real easy to say that we that you didn't care as a kid that it didn't have articulation. But most of us Transformers guys were also G.I. Joe collectors. And to some extent to, you know, even the Star Wars, the Kenner figures and things like that. And what I remember most about my my, my G.I. Joe figures, as opposed to my He-Man figures, my Transformers, uh, I didn't collect Star Wars like you. I didn't really get into it. I was a Star Trek nerd. Yes, I did, but but uh, but the when I got a G.I. Joe, all the articulation, those little rubber band hips, and you know, and everything that was destined for the drive a top rubber band. Took yeah. that screw out of his back and put a new rubber band in. We've all done it. And you try to get it down over that little hook <laughs> and try and fit it in. Oh, it's the hardest thing. But thread threading those weird little hook eye hooks. Oh, they're awful. They're awful. But you could play with those, right? They had articulation. You could. He could hold his gun. He could get down. He could, you know, move around. And even as you know, ten year old me realized that, like yeah. they were much more playable. Yeah. And uh, I mean. The Transformers from Diaclone, just they were brick bots that made great cars, right? They were awesome. Yeah. But it's it's the quality of Siege may not be uh, uh, diecast, but they're way more playable than anything that I had as a kid. Absolutely. And I like, don't get me wrong, I'm not somebody who's saying like oh you shouldn't get g1 or you shouldn't be g1 collector absolutely because that's what started for us it if nothing else if you if you collect it wonderful if you don't collect it you should definitely at least respect that it you know it is what brought us to where we are today so i'd like I'm, I'm i'm with all that and i even respect the fact that there are people that will say like i love things like the masterpiece line because it's as though they jumped off the screen and like i get all that and I think the reason that I fall somewhere in between is because much like you, I want in my hand exactly what I wanted as a kid. And when I get it with that articulation and with that look that I wanted as a kid, um, there's nothing that feels as sweet. Uh, you know, I'll, I will look at the Sage star screen. And I was out for the longest time because I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, it doesn't really look like a Tetrajet. It's kind of like a Tetrajet. The robot mode looks cool. But then when I got him in hand and everything that you could do and manipulate on the guy and every iconic pose that you could hit, I was like, you know what? This is this is what I wanted. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The plane, the plane from G1, which is up right there because Starscream Wife owns the plane. <laughs> um, you know, again, in alt mode, that plane is perfect. Absolutely perfect. The Siege one can't touch it. But in bot mode... The G1 bot for Starship, come on, as iconic as it is, you put that next to Siege and it can't hold a candle to it. No, not at all. And, and I mean, let's be honest, as it, they were fully taking advantage of us as kids because 
how many they didn't create anything they relabeled toys that were already made and so it's not the cartoon is iconic the story is iconic yeah. and the, the first time i remember getting megatron and people are going to think that i'm dissing g1 i'm not i love g1 i collect them absolutely love the nostalgia of it i'm just trying to be logical here yeah um the first time you see megatron on screen right and on in the cartoon and then the first time you get the megatron toy this isn't what i saw on tv the barrels under his eye it's just terrible yeah but you know i collect a lot of the the legend scale now thanks to deluxe baldwin uh and i do have a, a masterpiece scale megatron and suddenly you look at it and you're like now this is what i saw in my head when i went <laughs> to the store and to you know what it wasn't that long of a jump when you stop and really think about it it wasn't that long of a jump before developers started thinking the same thing and realizing the same thing because just by the time we got to beast wars we started to get characters that were far more articulated now granted there was a kind of a disconnect between uh you know the uh, animation models uh, matching up with the toy models because the toy models went by like early animation samples or something which is why they look a bit different and got those mutant helmets and stuff but the nugget and the idea was there that you know what there should be a greater match to the articulation and the look of the toy to what we're getting on screen it doesn't always translate perfectly but they do put the attempt in and if you're looking at something like beast wars i mean that was only about 10 years after the whole thing started you know they even had to to learn and, the, and and writers and creators and developers have admitted this that they didn't really know what they had created like when they killed off optimus prime they didn't realize how beloved of a character he had become to them it was just we're getting rid of the old to toy line for the new toy line and they looked at it from that perspective they didn't realize that they had created a beloved character and a beloved lore and once that i think it clicked with them that wow people are invested and care about this and care about the representations and the toys and the figures that we're giving them i think that made them respect their design process a lot more right from as early as beast wars and that's why beast wars was great and rid 2001 was great and there was a lot of great toys throughout the unicron trilogy even though the fiction's not for me and the animated toys were fantastic and so on and so forth yeah and uh every time i watch the the animated movie the, the 86 movie I'm just reminded that what they were doing was killing off licensed vehicles. Yeah. I mean, that's, they were like, oh, we're not paying Lamborghini. We're not paying, you know, well, I think they kept jazz, but we're not paying all these licenses to, to make. So suddenly they've got hot rod, yeah. brand, you know, generic, uh, fast car, RC. Yeah, modes. Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden they've got all their own modes that they can, they don't have to slap a Ford logo and pay you know, pay forward for it. But, uh, cause if you watch that first scene, it's like, Oh, there goes, there goes a licensed car. Oh, there goes yeah. a licensed car. Uh, but, uh, man, I could talk to you for an hour. What, uh, let's see, we got, uh, so far we've barely done transformers. We've gotten GI Joe out of the way. Okay. <laughs> what, what, is that, toy right? line, what is a toy line that you would like to see come back? A toy line that I would like to see come back. Yeah. Something, that's, something that's from, uh, not necessarily from the eighties. It could be anything from what we talked about to, uh, to something that doesn't, that's never had a quality toy line that you'd like to see done. Well, Ooh, um, there's you're asking two different questions there because some of them have had toy lines, but they weren't done well. Like Robocop had a toy line, but it had no knees. And it had no elbows and the arms couldn't move out to the side and it was done poorly um you know something more articulated there it would be great although that being said we do have what NECA did and they've done a fantastic job with that um a couple of years ago i think um it's hard i don't know if there's anything that hasn't really been done like you know i'm very much on the star trek mindset because we were there earlier but there were some decent um there was a decent line that came out in the 90s for them that was quite good i don't know if it could really be improved upon to be honest with you there's still great figures to this day and a lot of people don't even know that they exist but i mean they've done them for 
for uh, next gen and Voyager and DS9 and uh, even um, uh, like some of the classics ones. Um, something that wasn't done. I don't know. Was there anything that wasn't done? Everything was a toy commercial, really. I want to say Visionaires. I'd love to see Visionaires updated. They were they were great. Those toys I, were I, fantastic. Larkin mentioned that too, and I I believe I've heard a rumor that they are. Oh uh, really? I, I, I was talking to a guy that runs a toy shop, and rumor, rumor, rumor hmm. that they're making some that they're getting relicensed. Well, there was. I'm not wrong. There was talk of them joining, joining like the Hasbro movie verse at some point. So I, I think that now's a good time for that little gimmick to pop back up because it's kind of coming up in other toys again. Um, I do think that seeing some of the more, like I'd love to see silver heart, silver Hawks get redone, get the like NECA treatment or something like that. Uh, or the, the even, I would even I wouldn't even mind seeing the Funko Pop versions of those, like the the they're redoing with the Primal Age and stuff like that. You know uh, what was going to say? Except hmm. they had a toy line a couple of years ago that was actually quite good. It didn't seem to last a long time, and the reboot was quite good and lasted for a year or so. I, I don't know if it got marketed as much as it should have. Um, Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. I, as oh, yeah, kid, I always wanted Thunderbirds, and a couple of years ago, I'm not gonna lie, man, I was all about seeing what they were coming out with, and I saw like kind of the wave one time, and I was like, oh, I might, I might delve into that at some point. But by the time I ever got around to thinking about delving into it, it was gone again. Yeah, I, I do kind of remember that being a a thing that was coming back. Uh, uh, the the rebooted show was was pretty good too i watched a nice bit of it i only had one or two seasons but it was, it was done well yeah i thought I, I i would like to see that come back i remember watching that as a kid too obviously the the uh the uh oh he said wait there's a new series what's the new series ninja bill the new, the new series though the new series i think is the one that that got i think it's already been canceled oh okay. I could be wrong i mean you can you know you can search it up I believe there was a couple of seasons of it. I think it's also been canceled. And the new series, of course, didn't have marionettes. I think it was like CG animation, um, yeah, which I mean, is typical. But it was still well done. I I had fun watching it. Yeah, I think that I think that something like that would be a great niche. I think NECA would be perfect for it Thunderbirds. It's such a niche little toy that that you know people. It's kind of like. Well, it's like I would like to see them do an HR Puffin stuff series, like a Sid and Marty Croft toy line. I'd love to see NECA do that. Interesting. Like, uh, Very interesting. You know, just something they were a huge acid trip of a show, but I loved watching like, Sid and Marty Croft stuff as a kid. Yeah. So somebody like NECA would do really well with that, I think, because um, they're creepy and weird, just like they would like to do. Yeah. But um, yeah, Silverhawks, I'd love to see Silverhawks. Uh, Come back! I would love to see Netflix do a Silverhawks cartoon again. What about um, Captain Power? What about redoing Captain Power? Captain Power rock, man. Captain, I know, Power. It's, a, I know it's a messy licensing history there, but Captain Power was—I mean, it was so awful that it was great. Yeah, there, that's very. Uh, yeah, Captain Power will be good. Um, uh, oh, you know what would be good? A good comeback. What would be awesome would be Dungeons and Dragons and new toys for those. That would be fun. You know what? Never saw the show until oh, wow. I saw until I saw uh, like a history of I think maybe Toy Galaxy done it a little while ago. I was like, I didn't even know this existed. I don't know how I missed it, but I did not yeah. even know that it existed. Yeah, D Dungeons and Dragons to me was a great cartoon, a good story. I loved the characters because it was. I was. I think I've always been a geek and didn't know it. I, yeah. know I, I knew it. That's silly. But uh, like just the cast of characters in there, it was like true fantasy, science fiction. And uh, the idea of being lost in a theme park was great. And then, you know, the, if I'm not mistaken, Peter Cullen voiced uh, the villain in that, if I'm not wrong. Look, Cullen and Walker done everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's funny. You say like, you were a geek, probably didn't know it. I, I, I think I either didn't know it or was in denial of, of it for a long time. And honestly, I really didn't embrace it 
until I um, got together with my wife. Uh, she's the one who really brought it out of me. I said um, not long ago that I honestly, to some degree, Got Bad exists, at least in part because of her, because she brought that side kind of out. Um, and encouraged it. You know, you asked earlier, uh, and you said like all around geek. Yeah, very much. But like, our it's our life. It's our whole house. Like, we have, you know, we have um, um, wedding pictures done at a place called the Geek Public House, and it's all geek stuff in there. Um, you know, w when you walk into our house, there's a, a canvas, and you've seen those like ones where it's like, you know, in this house, we do this and that and the other thing. And then at the end, it's like, in this house, we do sports or in this house, we do like hockey or in this house, we do, I don't know, friendship or whatever it is. Well, ours goes right down through all of this list of stuff. And at the end, it's in this house, we do geek. It's, I don't know. I think that it's the sort of thing you almost need to embrace it as a lifestyle. And until a lot of people realize that a it's okay to just be yourself and b that there's this day and age especially always a community out there i think a lot of people deny themselves the things that they enjoy most in life because they think they're supposed to yeah I, and uh patriot prime has mentioned it before and and i've said it for you and most of us have probably said it to me there is absolutely no difference in and being geeky about toys cartoons or whatever, whatever it is, video games, than it is to be the guy who puts makeup on and goes to the Super Bowl. You know, there's no difference. Everybody's a geek about something. Like what you like and love what you love. I mean, you know, you look, you only live once. And if there's one thing that I've I've learned, um, you know, myself, I gained through my life and through my wife. And one thing that I try and pass on every time I talk to anyone, um, be it here or students in class or whatever, it's Whatever you do, always be true to who you are because you're going to be a lot happier and you're going to live a lot longer. Yeah. I, and it's a very simple message, but not enough people follow it. It's uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a harsher way to put it, but I, I joke with my mom or, or anybody's mom who tells their kids they can be anything they want to be. Yeah. And I say, no, you can't. You can't be anything you want to be, but you can find what you're good at and what you love doing and be the best at that. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, it's much easier. It's much easier to focus once you find out what you love, what you're good at, and do that than trying to be something that's you're built completely. It's funny up here. One of the the courses that people do, uh, you know, teenagers do is called career. And one of the messages that I always always have sent there is, if you listen to nothing else that I tell you, find something that you enjoy doing. Find something that you love to do because even though you have to go to work and work is work. That's why it's not called happy party fun time. It's called work because it's work. But if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to lead a lot happier of a life. And some people will say, yeah, but like I enjoy, you know, hockey and video games. How am I going to, you know, but like I'm not good enough at hockey to get like in the NHL and like, how am I going to do anything with that? And I know, I know a guy who I grew up with who parlayed both of that into a career where he is a video game designer and has worked on things like NHL games for different companies. Like for somebody who grew up and loved video games and loved hockey, is there a better job? No, there's exactly. not. That's exactly right. I, and I think it's much easier. It's much more realistic to be able to say, you know, you know, you might not be able to make millions off doing what you love, but you may be able to do what you love and then try to take that passion into your work life. So if you have something that you love to do on the side, that's just fun. Yeah. You do. I'm never going to get rich doing this, right? No, no, no. no. So I'm, doing I'm doing it to meet cool people and play with toys that I already like doing and share it yeah. with people who are like-minded. That's why I do it. Yeah. But that's because, good reason because, I have, because I have something like this that I can do and enjoy, it sure does make it easier to take that joy into work and go, you know, when I'm done here, I get to go do something fun. Yeah. You know, so it's it's taking your passion for what you love to do into something that you might not love to do as much. Luckily, I do love what I do, but um, didn't always, you know, worked back retail yeah. for decades and it sucked, but got me here. Yeah. yeah. But man, I could, 
I, I didn't even realize how long we've been talking. I told you we were going to be on here for about 30 minutes. But well, you know, I, I, like I was paying attention. I think it's been about 40 minutes we've been on here, but I know we were fiddling around here for a lot longer. And I'm going to say it now. I'm going to give a shout out to my wife. God bless her. I know that she has been very, very patient and understanding today <laughs> and uh, kind of waiting on me. Um, but I, I mean, this has been a blast, though. I always enjoy doing this stuff. And I know that for us today it was very impromptu. For 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 anybody who doesn't get it, we we were trying. Larkin knows we were trying this other streaming service, and I felt like a total jerk because it just wasn't working. We tried like three times to get that going; it wasn't going. And oh man, it, it was finally he was patient enough with me to get this going. Because if you don't know, Hangouts on Air is going away as of tomorrow. So we're trying to come that up as of tomorrow. Yeah, the, well, oh, yeah, well the first. Is tomorrow the first? Yeah, tomorrow. Um, so, for anyone who is not, who is in this room that is not already subbed to uh, GotBot, please do it. I know that most of you probably are, and if you're not, shame on you. Uh, the homework I always try to give away lately is if you're in here and you see somebody in this chat that you're not subscribed to, click the button, hit subscribe, and uh, help 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 people out. Um, if you're watching this later, um, please go and subscribe to Gotbot. I'll have a link to his uh, uh, channel in the description. And like he likes to say, just go to Google, search Dennis Gotbot, and you'll find him. He's everywhere. Right, find. Uh, and uh, Dennis, there is is there anything you'd like to say before we close out? Uh, you know, look, not a whole lot other than I thank all of you for being here. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to come on these shows and have these interactions, not just so you, I can have a conversation with whoever I'm on the show with, in this case, Cato. Um, but, you know, I, I, you guys know by now, a lot of you are friends of mine that I, I love, you know, anytime that we get an opportunity to interact and talk and, you know, chit chat and whatever. Um, you know, I, I thank you for all the support that I have gotten from you guys over the years as well. And I am absolutely excited. Um, the plan is to do my first premiere. I plan to set it up and do that Friday for episode one, of season two of Universal Collision. That's the thing I'm excited to start bringing to people now. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I enjoy making it. Well, I have no doubt. And I, I will um, make sure that I'm available to watch that because I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and guys, um, just because of, the nature of the beast. I'm just going to uh, do some shameless plugging right now. Yeah, I said that Patriot Prime shameless plugging. <laughs> Keep an eye out for more shows like this. Kato's Toy Box presents uh, my reviews. Uh, Kato's Toy Box reviews. Animation conversation with Rudy Zizu, who had a, a little cameo in the chat who I haven't talked to in a while. He's been busy. Uh, my show uh, Punch Counter Punch was started in by 82, who was also in the room where we take on different topics in the Transformers world. On that note, Rudy every needs more energy. Rudy needs more energy. He's not high energy enough. <laughs> I love Rudy. Rudy, yeah. I love you, man. But you just got to amp up that energy a bit more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love I love his, uh, you know, I've told people, uh, again, that, that uh, Rudy has a way of making me feel what he feels when he grabs a toy. And I He's love that about him. him. Yeah, his, his joy, his joy is absolutely infectious. Absolutely one of the funnest guys to watch. And I'm, I'm really glad that he lives across the pond or else there's a good chance my girlfriend would leave me for him. So <laughs> there's that. But uh, all right. On that note, guys, thank you, everyone, for coming in the chat. Thank you, everyone, who will watch this later. Uh, again, I will have a link to GotBot's uh, YouTube channel in the description within a few minutes of this thing ending. Uh, on that note, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and always play. This is Cato, and on behalf of Dennis GotBot, uh, see you around like a donut. Take it easy, guys.